Hi everyone, this is Suman. Today I am going to teach interrupts in MSP 430. Let us see the outlines of today's lecturing. Firstly, I am going to discuss about what is an interrupt. Then what happens when an interrupt is requested. These are the main two agendas for today's lecture. Ok, now let us see the what is interrupt. The meaning of interrupt is nothing but a disturb. Okay, for time being, consider a situation where you are watching this video lecturing. At that time, your phone might have ringing. Okay, you may feel that the phone is an highest priority. You may pause this video or while left alone the video runs, you are going to pick the call and you are going to speak it. Okay, that is nothing but the call has been taken as an highest priority task. Okay, usually in this MSP 430, we are going to write the highest priority task as an interrupt. Okay, let us see where actually we are going to use these interrupts. Okay, here we are going to use this interrupts for waking up one CPU. Usually most of the microcontroller is going to run in an low power modes. Actually your MSP430 supports some 6 varieties of an low power modes. That is nothing but an it is going to take very less power to run the system. Most of the time the CPU doesn't have a task to run. That's why it will be in a sleeping mode. If it is there in any task, you can wake your CPU by using an this interrupts. Okay, then the another example you can consider is an infrequent task. This infrequent task are an actually an human being interruption. For example, humans are typing in any keyboard. It may take a longer time. At that time, you can give a preference for an infrequent task as an interrupts. Okay, now let us see how the interrupt is going to serve in an MSP 430. Okay, there here you can see the user program. It has been running in line by line. Okay, at that instant, you might have got some interrupt. Okay, once the interrupt has been occurred, it doesn't move like a subroutine to the straight away the point where it wants to serve. Actually, it is going to see the interrupt vector table. In this interrupt vector table, it has the address for that particular interrupt. Okay, actually here it uh, in MSB 430 it has an 32 interrupt vector table. It is going to starting in the range from an FFC0 to FFEH. There it is going to tell the address from which address it need to start routing. Here if you see the point, if it has an interrupt has been occurred, it goes straight away to that equivalent interrupt vector table. It is going to see the starting address of that particular interrupt service routine where it need to start. It jumps from straight away there to here, interrupt service routing. Once it has been served, once again it will return back to the main code and it start executing the normal flow. Ok, now let us see the interrupt vector table. Ok, I have told that it is going to start from the range of FFFFEH. Then it is going to the another location FFC0. From year to year, it has an approximately 32 address spaces. In these address spaces, it is going to serve in different types of an interrupt. Now let us see if it is having an higher address number means it is going to have an highest priority. The lower address byte represents a lower priority. Okay, now let us see for an only one reset that is for an reset. For setting and reset, we have an interrupt flags for PO or IFG. This is nothing but a power on reset interrupt flag. Then you have an reset IFG. It is an external reset pin they might have given. Then you have an WT IFG. This is usually used for watch talk time interrupts. Then there is a KV flag. This KV is used for a protection type of an any memory locations. In order to access any dedicated memory locations, you need to access the locations through a key password. If the password fails, it is going to generate a KV flag. Simply it is going to restart your system. Okay, in this location FFEH, we have in some five different sources of an interrupt flags. By using those flags, it doesn't know what to do. Reset means it is nothing but simply need to start from a starting of the code. Okay, here any of the flags can be considered. Now let us move to the point. Actually, what happens when an interrupt is requested? Okay, usually as soon as the interrupt comes, we are not going to serve that particular uh, interrupts. First, we are going to make sure that current instruction has been completed. 
okay in each line we are going to write a separate instruction in an msp430 it is make sure that the current running instruction has been completed properly then it is going to wake up the master clock if it is was in a sleeping mode then what it is going to do is first it is going to stop the current running task and pushes the pr present program counter value into an stack memory look okay, stack pointer then it is going to store the status register information also in order to retain this status register information at the end once the program counter and status register information has been pushed into an that particular stack pointer it is going to look for the interrupts i have told the total it has in 32 locations of an interrupts out of those 32 location any of the interrupt may have arisen at a time it may have got some multiple interrupt means it need to choose the highest priority interrupt point that's why it is going to take an highest priority task once it has been taken that inter priority task if it is having an only single source interrupt means that particular interrupt flag will be cleared otherwise it will be remain in the same state once it has been served that interrupt vector table it sees the location where it want to start its interrupt service routing straight away it will jumps to that particular part then it is going to clear the status register information if the status register is cleared means we will tell that if the, all the values are zero the cpu is going to be running in a full active mode it is going to run then it is going to in that interrupt service routine we want to write the code what we want to serve when that particular interrupt has been occurred now let us see how the interrupt stack sees okay usually we will be initializing our stack pointer to the top of the ram once even where there is an interrupt service routine occurred it is a request it is going to push the program counter value into a stack pointer that's why the pc at the top it has been taken once it has been moved it is going to decrement by double then it is going to store the status register information that will be stored here then it is going to serve for your interrupt service routine okay after it has been served for an interrupt service routine it is going to come back with an read i this read i stands for an return from an interrupt while returning it is going to load the status register information back to an r2 register then it is going to load the program counter value where it has been already stopped then it start executing okay this is all about an interrupt how it is going to work and how it will be serving an interrupts now let us conclude this session okay what all the things we have discussed we have come across what is an interrupt how the interrupt is been serviced okay here in order to serve an interrupt the main two parameters are we need to have an interrupt vector table by seeing that vector table we can identify the source of an interrupt what has occurred and what source has made then interrupt to occur then we are going to see the interrupt service routine must be written by an user what you want to do for example if it has been a reset interrupt we need to look for an it from the starting location there we are going to load that to end that particular point okay the references for today's lecturing is elsewhere direct the textbook is M msp 430 microcontroller basics john f davis along with that one i have referred some of the websites in and Texas Instruments. Thank you. Have a good day.